We are back for another What's for Dinner. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of a mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you another what's for dinner. And in these videos, I walk you through exactly what we ate that night for dinner. And I do my best to guide you in the direction of exactly how to make that recipe or where to go to get it. A lot of my recipes are Pinterest inspired or things that I've already cooked and shared here on my channel. And I am one of those people who pretty much cooks in the house seven days a week. We do not order out. We do simple nights like soup and sandwiches and burgers and tater tots and taco Tuesdays. And then there's times where we do a little bit more complicated meals. And again, usually those are things that are Pinterest inspired. But if I took my camera out to film every step of the way, I would never put my camera down. And I really enjoy cooking in the kitchen and not the stress necessarily of always setting it up. But I promise you, you guys, I'm going to walk you through some amazing meals. And by the time you're done with this, you're going to leave with tons of what's for dinner inspiration. And starting right off the bat with an oldie but a goodie is Mississippi chicken. And this is probably a staple in our house at least once a month. And I do have a full dedicated cooking video for this recipe. So I'll go ahead and link it up above for you guys and down in the description box. But this is made with chicken thighs. Super, super easy. You're just gonna braise them in a screaming hot oiled pan until they get a nice crisp on the edge. And then you transfer them into a crock pot and you go ahead and add half a stick of butter, one package of brown gravy mix, one package of ranch mix, and then some pepperoncinis with a little bit of the juice. And then that is it, you guys, in the crock pot for four hours on high, and it comes out so super tender and delicious. My husband absolutely loves it. He loves the gravy that it makes, so I always make a mashed potatoes, and we just ladle the chicken and the gravy over the mashed potatoes. I happen to love the pepperoncinis, so I throw some of those on my plate. This is a staple, definitely one you'll wanna check out. So next up is one that I could not wait to share with you guys, because this was one that I just kind of pulled from a couple of recipes and ended up making the most dynamite pork chop recipe. Do you guys see that pork chop? I, I can't even. Uh, I went ahead and prepared it with some noodles and I'll get into what I threw on top of those noodles in just a second. But let's go over this pork chop for a minute. So I took a pork chop and I put it in a nice hot frying pan with some butter and got a really, really good crisp on both sides. I took it out of the frying pan and put it off to the side. And then into the frying pan, I threw in some butter, some brown sugar, a little bit of honey, a little bit of cinnamon and then these apples and I let them just kind of like stew down and make their own brown sugar like caramelization and then I threw in that apple cider jam that I got from Trader Joe's and made this awesome like apple cinnamony chutney kind of thing and I ladled it over the pork chops and baked it in the oven for like another 20 to 25 minutes just to make sure that they were cooked all the way through and then I made some buttered bow tie noodles and in a pan, I did some shallots, some butter, some rosemary, some garlic, and some Parmesan cheese. And I made this like really thick, almost pesto. It was super strong. So you didn't need a lot, but you just put a little bit of this like flavor morsel on the top of your buttered bow tie noodles and you mixed it in while you were eating. Holy cow, you guys, like this was a such a fall inspired and delicious dinner. Everyone is still talking about it. This night, you guys, was like improv in Kira's kitchen because we were supposed to do that country fried chicken with the mashed potatoes and the white gravy, and I was so excited about it, and time got away from me, and I got caught up doing something, and I just didn't have time to do all of that. So this, you guys, is fried chicken cutlets like my mama used to make. That is it. It is some egg, some Italian breadcrumbs, fried in a frying pan, end of story. But I decided to go ahead and use one of my smart baking buns. I hadn't used them in a while, you guys. I've been kind of cheating, but I love these smart baking buns. If you guys have not tried them, I have a link down in the description box where you guys can save 10% off your order. And it's a 
permanent discount code. So you guys can order once a week, once a month, once every six months or once a year and you still always can use my code to save that 10%. But I love them and they work out perfectly in this situation where I know I'm gonna cheat elsewhere. So on my plate, I have a chicken cutlet with some melted American cheese and some bacon on the Smart Bakery bun. I have some lettuce and tomato that I put on the side plus I threw some of it on my chicken cutlet sandwich. I have some fresh blue cheese dressing from that keto lady. You guys, that blue cheese dressing is the bomb. And then I also have some of those Zaps pickle chips. Maya was actually willing to share with me. Those are pickle chips that I got from the Dollar Tree. And together, you guys, this was a wonderful meal that was completely off the cuff. So this was a new recipe for me and I got it off of Pinterest. So I'll go ahead and link that recipe for you guys below or you guys can always follow me on Pinterest if you don't follow me there. I have tons of boards to give you guys some inspiration. But this was an instant pot meal and it was a creamy ziti. I didn't use ziti noodles. I just used like pretty noodles that I just got from Costco in a really cute um, pasta pack. But it was super easy. You put a cup and a half of chicken stock and one cup of heavy cream to every eight ounces of pasta with a little bit of salt and pepper. That's it. You don't stir. You just pour the pasta in and those liquids over it and then you just let it go and you put it on high pressure for six minutes and then you let it naturally release for six minutes and then you let the steam out and inside of it you mix in some pasta sauce, some Parmesan cheese and some mozzarella. It was so delicious and I had it with a side salad with some tomatoes, a cucumber, craisins my homemade croutons which you can still see are still burnt and of course that, that keto ladies blue cheese dressing because I am obsessed with that but this was a super easy pasta and salad Friday night all right you guys we are gonna talk right now about this chicken because I've probably talked about it a zillion times. You guys are gonna get tired of hearing about it, but I can't help it. This is that member's mark of Southern style chicken nuggets that are supposed to taste like the ones from Chick-fil-A and they taste better. They are seriously the best tasting chicken nugget I've ever had and it's not a chicken nugget. It's just a well flavored, piece of breaded chicken it was so good and this you guys is a mock kfc bowl so on the bottom is my homemade mashed potatoes then a little bit of corn then some of these chick-fil-a ish chicken nuggets with some cheddar cheese on top melted in the microwave and poof it makes a kfc chicken bowl and this you guys was probably my favorite although generally speaking it wouldn't have been but it's these chicken nuggets you guys like i just bought two bags from Sam's Club. I am utterly obsessed. All right, now we're on to a simple night. Another night that this wasn't improv, this was planned, but it was just one of those super easy nights is burgers on the grill. So I used to buy handmade burgers and I don't do that anymore because everybody likes something different in their burgers and I like to stuff mine. So I just take regular ground beef and I make a super thin patty and then you can put whatever you want inside, your different choices of cheeses, roasted red peppers, bacon, in. anything that you want that you would love to have inside of a burger you just go ahead and lay it on top and then you take another super thin burger and place it on top of it just make sure you seal the sides and you have a nice stuffed burger you can stuff it with jalapenos if you like spicy and then we just throw it on the grill and I usually serve it with tater tots I have a nice toasted bun there that is not a smart baking bun hence why I need to do those more often because that is cheating and I'm supposed to be making better choices about what I put in my body but I have that Annie Thousand Island dressing, some lettuce, tomato, and mayo. Super good, simple night. Now you guys, so just you just see how clear that picture was of the burger. So this is with my new iPhone camera and the camera takes great pictures and so does the video and my computer will receive the pictures but I feel like the video doesn't come across that well so this isn't coming across the way it's supposed to look or did look with the naked eye but this is the baked cream cheese spaghetti that my husband cooked for me on his day off. I'll link that recipe for you guys because it was from Pinterest. I like sent him the link and he just went ahead and made dinner but it was a baked 
cream cheese spaghetti casserole and you use like bacon and cheese and you top it with green onions and it was just you guys this was such a dynamite meal maybe one day i'll recreate this and actually show you like do a full cooking video because it was definitely worth it again i'll link it but for a pasta dish that was a spot on and a pasta casserole yes talk to me love that all right, super simple night again here. You can tell sometimes we go big and sometimes we don't. And this is a soup and sandwich kind of night. And this is actually a baked potato soup that I got from every plate a long time ago. Like I purchased that recipe when I purchased the box and now I save all the cards from every time I cook from every plate. And it's something that I just recreated. And I love this recipe, you guys. The potato soup is so easy. I actually have one that I can link for you guys up above that I've made. It's a corn potato chowder and it is amazing. But this is still like it's the bomb.com for a super quick potato soup. I will make this every plate one every single time. And you guys know my link for every plate is always in the description box if you want to give them a try because they are just so worth it just for their inspiration of their recipes alone. But anyways, I went ahead and made that soup and I just topped it with green onions and a little bit of bacon and cheese and then on the side I have an English muffin with a little bit of egg salad and tomato I love bacon and tomato with my egg salad it's super super yummy and coupled with that English muffin it was a perfect super easy warm and cozy soup and sandwich kind of night picture worthy you guys right magazine picture worthy all kidding aside though you guys this meal doesn't just look good it tasted good so if you saw the little date night that daryl and i did if not i'll link that video up above so you guys can check it out but we went on a little date night and when we came home i made this steak and potato like cast iron skillet recipe and i got that from pinterest so i'll link it down below for you guys as well and it was super good the first night but i was full we had had a late picnic so I didn't really have much of dinner so I saved a portion of my meal for the next day and if you guys have seen any what's for dinner videos you know I love my steak and eggs so would it be a what's for dinner video if there wasn't steak and eggs so I made two sunny side up eggs with a little bit of salt and pepper and just threw it on top of this yummy steak and potato garlic cast iron skillet meal from the night before there was a little piece of croissant left over from the night before so I had that and then I we also had some rainbow cauliflower the night before so this was just a compilation of a leftovers that I had for lunch with those eggs but you guys definitely try out that recipe that I'm going to link in the description box for you because it was good by itself but then the next day with those eggs and if you would have thrown some mushrooms in there holy cow game changer showstopper so good this meal, you guys, I wish I could have had my grandfather sitting at the kitchen table eating with us. He called this pasta spaghetti aioli. Well, if it was with spaghetti, which pretty much just means garlic and oil. And he would love this. He would ask for it. My grandmother would make it for him all the time. And I had some leftover ground sausage, like not used in the freezer that I wanted to use up. It wasn't a portion big enough to make pasta sauce or anything. So I decided to throw it in with the garlic and the oil when I was cooking it. And that's it, you guys, a little bit of garlic oil salt and pepper and some seasonings inside from that sausage and that's all it took to give that pasta so much flavor so I just made a pound of pasta and then took this sausage garlic oil seasoning flavor yumminess and just poured it over the pasta and that's what we had I think we might have had salad that night maybe that's not pictured sometimes I do pasta with salad and sometimes I'm too lazy and I throw pasta on the on the table and call it a day but that was so good Good and my papa's favorite meal and I wish I could have had him sitting there because I know he would have loved it. We are going to finish on a high note you guys because everybody loves themselves some Taco Tuesday and I love myself Taco Tuesday most of all because I grew up to be a cilantro freak like I don't know when that ever happened I used to hate it growing up and I said it tastes like soap and now I just I don't know I grew an appreciation for it and I love it piled on everything so I have two of those little mini taco boats with some taco meat some cheese lettuce tomato 
sour cream and cilantro and then I did the same exact thing on just a few of those scoop chips and that was a perfect taco Tuesday for us we love it simple we love it easy but we definitely love our tacos in this house but that is it, you guys. That concludes a, another episode of What's for Dinner. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Again, don't forget to check those I cards up at the top or the description box for any kind of Pinterest links or recipes that I have for you guys because a good chunk of these I have a full video for or a link to be able to give you the exact recipe. And the other things, you guys, were just super, super easy. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys all so much. Subscribe if you are new and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.